What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to TTB Ravens Media, bringing Ravens content every single day. If you want to see that daily Ravens content, make sure to subscribe button down below. Hit the notification bell if you want to get notified every single time I upload a brand new video. Now, in this video today, before I even get into the topic, um, if you guys can't tell, I'm wearing a Cleveland Browns jersey. This is actually an autogram jersey from the 1960s. Um, Jim Brown passed away today. Um, that's why I'm wearing it. It's probably the only time I'll ever wear a Cleveland Browns jersey in any TTB unless there's some sort of bet lost. Um, but, you know, I wanted to pay respect to, you know, those old teams and to Jim Brown, who you know, a lot of people consider the greatest running back of all time. I think he's the most dominant running back of all time by far um, and one of the most impactful players and not just in the NFL, in the history of sports. So uh, rest in peace to him. Obviously, I hope, you know, wish the best for his family. I um, always hate to see, you know, players like that that so many people looked up to. Uh, pass away uh, he, he was 87 years old so you know obviously he lived a long life um but it's unfortunate i just i wanted to bring that up in the video so um that's why but getting into kind of today's topic talking about david ojabo david ojabo if you didn't know put on about 10 pounds according to david ojabo put on about 10 pounds of muscle uh in this off season comparing to his last season he played with the ravens and he is somebody that a lot of people were somewhat upset about over the pick last year. I was not. I was very happy about that selection because we did the exact same thing this year, and I was happy about it as well. But because he was a first-round player, he was a top 15 pick. Joshua and I had dozens of discussions. Hey, you're sitting there at 14? If Ojabo is there, do you have to take him? And I was like, honestly, if Kyle Hamilton, if Sauce Gardner are not there, he was the guy. He was the guy to take. Oh, we got his old defensive coordinator. Like, boom, take him in the first round. He's legit. A lot of people felt like he was a better pass rusher than Aiden Hodges. Aiden Hodges was more all around. But in terms of pure pass rushing ability, a lot of scouts felt that David Ojabo had had a better NFL translation of his skill set. And then came the Michigan Pro Day. Major injury, going to miss basically the entire first, you know, rookie season. And it was like, okay, don't draft Ojabo in the first round. Doesn't make sense. But the Ravens drafted him in the second round. And I was I was very happy about it. I was like, okay. You know why? Because that's essentially trading that second round pick for a next year first top 15 pick and selecting an edge rusher. But when you select that player, they've already been in your building for a year. They know your offense or they know your defense. They know the players they're playing around. They know the coaches. He was already familiar with Mike McDowell, but now he knows Harbaugh. Now he knows all those guys. And he's going to be able to come in basically – after red shirting a year and take over this defense. We saw the flashes last year. Absolutely. Huge strip sack against Joe Burrow. He attacked the football. He had power. He had quickness off the edge. And now he's added again, 10 pounds of muscle. He is absolutely ready to take over as the number one pass rusher on this team. And people may be concerned, right? Young pass rusher, you know, it's, it's tough to rely on a rookie like that. Top 15 picks that are pass rushers consistently transform defenses. That, that is one of the very few positions. I think, you know, I think running back, a lot of times wide receivers, sometimes offensive linemen. Those and edge rushers. I think those are the ones that are able to consistently come in and elevate like drastically elevate the offense or defense that they go to and david ojabo was valued was seen as a top 15 pick i felt he was the clear fourth best edge rusher in that class maybe even the third if you considered um walker kind of an outside linebacker rather than just a pure edge um, you know, I would have considered him third. I, you know, I felt it was Kayvon Thibodeau. I thought it was Aiden Hutchinson uh, next. And then it would have been David Ojabo prior to injury. Then it was like, okay, he's hurt. Now where do we go? Okay, was it Jermaine Johnson? Is it George Carl Laftis? You know, y'all remember those discussions. I'm very confident about that. We had them all the time. But those, I mean, 
look at all those other guys did. Thibodeau was awesome. Aiden Hutchinson, awesome. Kurt Laftis even played very well uh, for a rookie. He didn't transform the defense, but played very well. And he went a lot later than uh, than the Ravens at 14 when Ojabo could have been drafted by the Ravens. And now you're adding him to a defense with a great offensive, with a different great, I keep saying offensive, with a great defensive coordinator. I do think he, Mike McDonald is great. I think he's done a very good job with this defense and been able to, you know, fix problems when they arise. He, you know, the same problem typically doesn't happen multiple times under Mike McDonald. He 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 fixes those those problems very quickly. But the Ravens have not had a 10 sack player since Terrell Suggs. I think that's going to change. I will. I do. I, I feel like David Ojabo this year will come in and put up 10 sacks because his ability to get after the quarterback and put pressure on people, along with Mike McDonald fully understanding exactly how to get pressures with him, how to get those sacks, is going to combine for a nasty duo. In addition to that, the Ravens have a very good secondary. Teams can't just, oh, yeah, no, we can just quick throw. No, they can't quick throw because the secondary is very good. Ojabo is going to come out and be that number one pass rusher. And I am saying that I'm still on board. I still want to sign free agent edge rushers. I want Justin Houston. I want Leonard Floyd. You know, I talked about those guys um, in a video that I posted earlier in the week. I want those guys. But that's for depth. David Ojabo is our number one pass rusher. And I don't think that there's many players that I would take over him. There's no players that I would take over him in free agency, but there's not many players that are even trade assets that you could go after that, you know, I would take over David Ojabo because he was that guy coming out of college. And we did the same thing with Voorhees, Andrew Voorhees drafting him in the seventh round. We essentially traded a next year's sixth round pick for a player that would have been a third round pick in next year's draft. These types of moves are exactly what separate the Ravens from other teams. Teams that struggle in the draft is because they are patient. They're willing to say, you know what? That's value. And he did play a few games where people may be disappointed in the numbers that he put up. He didn't put up crazy sack numbers, but he absolutely flashed coming off of a major injury. Didn't get a training camp. Didn't get an off season. Basically just was like, all right, step on the field, go. Played pretty well. Let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts for David Ojabo. I think he gets about 10, 10 and a half sacks and four forced fumbles in this upcoming season. All on strip sacks. I'm very high on him. I think you should be too. Thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe for David Raymond's content, and I'll see all of you again tomorrow.